We're now going to set up our game over screen. So let me pop into Kismet. What we're going to do is take the end game menu variable. We're going to set that to a particular game over UI scene, play a sound telling the player that they've lost the match, and then we'll call on the remote event for end game. So the first thing is I'm going to take my camera setup comment. We're actually going to change the name of this. We'll, let's call this player and camera setup. I'll expand the size of it a bit. Now let's grab attach to actor and set camera target. And I'm going to right click, go to new action, and choose set variable object. We're going to choose A is less than B. Now if we take a look, that means if player lives goes below zero, then we're going to set our end game menu to a game over screen. So let's grab this end game menu named variable, hit control C, control V to duplicate that. We'll plug that into the target. Now for our value, I'm just going to right click on the input and create a new object variable. We need to set this to a particular UI scene that's already in the content browser. So let's close Kismet, open up the content browser, and if we take a look here inside our UI scenes, you'll see UI game over. Just to take a quick look at this, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the words game over in the middle of the scene. And we have display cursor set to off and pause game while active switched off in the flags for the scene in general. Now with that selected in the content browser, I'm going to jump over here to our object variable and we'll click the use selected object in content browser. So we've literally passed the game over screen into the end game menu variable which is now ready to be sent into the end game uh, sequence. However, before we do that, let's play a sound letting the player know that they have lost. So if we close out Kismet and go back into the content browser, underneath the sound cues for our top-down package, you'll see cue game over. And if we sample this, you have lost the match. It's just the announcer telling the player that they have lost. So we'll close out, go back into Kismet. I'm going to right-click, create a new action, jump down to sound, and we'll choose play sound. Over in the play sound property here, we'll just click to bring in the game over sound. From out of set object variable, we want to play the sound. Now from the out of this, we want to call our end game event. So I'll right click, go to new action, event, and choose activate remote event. Expand out my comment box so things look nice. And we need to just make sure we plug into the event name, end game. So now what's happening is that as soon as our health, or, I'm sorry, our lives, excuse me, duck down below zero, we're setting our end game menu to UI game over, and then we're playing a sound, and then we're activating our remote event end game. The remote event end game calls on this end game sequence. Now what's that going to do? Well, that's going to make sure the camera is sent back to the player. It's going to enable cinematic mode. It's going to open up whatever scene was just passed into it, in this case the game over screen. It'll wait for two seconds, and then it's going to fade the camera out to black, and then it's going to take us out to the main menu. So now we can see the entire flow. Now back here inside of Kismet, the last thing I'm going to do is grab our remote event end game and all of this stuff up here. Let's put this into its own comment, which we'll call end game. And we'll just kind of move this, all of this, a bit up and out of the way. So now we can zoom back. Now, it will mean that things get spaced out pretty heavily, but I like to make sure that I can zoom back pretty far and things don't overlap too terribly much. So we're just going to do something about like that. Okay, so with that, we have our game over screen set up, and that is going to wrap up this video. Go ahead and save, and then we'll continue.